Hello there, welcome to a special evening edition of IndyCar on, um, what is it today, the 28th I think, today is it, 28th of July. Tomorrow is a big day, as far as I'm concerned anyway, in the Scottish Independence Calendar with the beginning of the um, Scottish, Society, uh, Scottish uh, Sovereignty Research Group's conference entitled Empowering the Nation, which is taking place tomorrow in Dunfermline at the Carnegie Conference Centre. Now, though the tickets for the entire weekend uh, cost £25, if you don't have that sort of money to spare, but you'd like to come for even just for one day and take part in the panel discussions or be in the audience to ask questions, then you can do that for just a tenner and you can buy tickets for a single day. If you're not able to attend uh, physically and at venue, you can also uh, attend through a, a special Zoom package which costs a fiver, so you can still take part, but without having to be there in person. So what's happening tomorrow? Well, I'll be speaking tomorrow at uh, one of the first events which is uh, scheduled over the three days and that is a panel discussion called Roots to Independence. Now, I'll be speaking alongside such notables as Sarah Sawyers, she who um, most notably has um, brought our attention to the fact that we still have a written constitution in the form of our claim of right from 1689. And also Peter Bell, a well-known columnist and sometimes controversial figure whom I've had my disagreements with but who I still respect e enormously, also speaking on uh, his methodology for getting to uh, independence by a different route. And there are actually six different routes to independence that will be covered. My job is to cover the first two, which are the so-called gold standard method, which is favoured by the SNP and by Nicola Sturgeon, and also to look at the ability of the Scottish Parliament to hold its own unsanctioned referendum uh, without any Section 30 order whatsoever and without the permission or otherwise of the Westminster Parliament. And we'll be going into details about why that's feasible and why having no uh, Section 30 order does not hamper things in any way. And over the next three days there will of course be other discussions on things as notable as the currency, the banking system, uh, the industrial policy of the new or the newly freed Scotland, what it can do with that industrial policy. Also we will be talking about defence, uh, spending on conventional methods of defence, joining NATO. All of these things will be debated publicly for the first time. Now unlike the SNP conferences where such matters appear to have been largely left out of the, the conference schedules in the past, we're going to explore these in an open and public forum, uh, which I think is the first time this has really been done with a panel of experts from all over the world. And these are experts on all kinds of things. I mean, Dr. Mark McNaught, who is the um, the president of the, I think the president is the right word, or the leader, if you like, of the Scottish um, Sovereignty Research Group as an academic. And Dr. McNaught has written his own constitution for Scotland, and like so many of us, was unaware of the fact that the claim of right actually constituted a constitution and was still active, live and legal in Scots law. But Dr McNaught spent six years of his life writing constitutions, first of all for the Catalan state, which as we know failed in its bid with its uh, independence referendum uh, back in 2016, I think it was, if memory serves me correctly, somebody will probably correct me there. But he's also written a, uh, a very comprehensive um, constitution which was actually delivered into the hands of Michael Russell two, three years ago now as a present basically for the Scottish Parliament. Still nothing has happened from that. However, that will be debated and the idea of Scotland as a country and no longer as a part of another country, this is what we seem to be labelled as at the moment, is what we're discussing. We'll be looking at pensions, we'll be looking at the currency that we'll use, how that currency will be uh, supported by a central bank, where the money is going to come from to do all of that. And these experts who are going to be discussing these are people like uh, Dr Tim Rideout, who is an expert economist. We'll also be having more constitutional debate 
with uh, another constitutional expert, Elliot Bulmer, who is the SNP's uh, go-to man when it comes to writing a new constitution. So we've got some of the top people coming from all over the place to be here uh, in Scotland and in Dunfermline tomorrow. Also notably, an old friend of mine, Martin Keesings, who is famous for having uh, put the case, or rather asked the, um, the court of session, the highest court in Scotland, to make a ruling on whether we could have an independence referendum without a Section 30 order. And of course he was famously rebuffed because there was no bill at the time written uh, in which the Scottish Government was requesting uh, <coughs> the ability to hold a referendum. And so Martin's uh, wealth crowdfunded attempt to figure this out and actually get an answer for the first time in 315 years was unsuccessful. But Martin is also, uh, as far as I'm concerned, one of the founding members of the independence movement itself. And Martin, despite his um, his own personal problems and health problems, has kept going. He was one of the organisers of one of the very first independence rallies in Dunfermline, uh, at which I spoke publicly for the first time, and uh, notably had to follow, believe it or not, uh, I had to follow Tommy Sheridan on stage, which is not an easy thing to do, to follow a man such as Tommy. So all kinds of people are going to be there. There will also be, um, tomorrow evening, our own version of Scottish Question Time, in which we will have an audience which is not full of BBC plants and Conservative councillors for the first time, where people will actually get a chance to ask real questions of real independence experts and get some real answers for a change. The idea of the conference is not just simply to have a talking shop. The idea of the conference is to pull together the results of all of the debates and all of the conclusions that have been drawn over the three days into a plan which will actually get us over the line and get us towards independence successfully by whichever one of the six routes that um, we decide to follow, because there are so many of them. Some have more benefits than others, some have more downsides than others, but the fact of the matter is there are always other ways of doing things. So I recommend, if you can, to come along. If you can't come along, then the uh, question time programme that we're planning for the evening, as far as I remember, is actually going to be televised live. I am not certain yet how that's being done, so I can't tell you that, but if you go to the Scottish Sovereignty Research Group's website uh, and Empowering the Nation page, you should find it all there. So I'm looking forward to this tomorrow. I've taken a day out of my schedule to go do this. I believe in it, and I think this is probably one of the most worthwhile events of the campaigning calendar so far. There are obviously, there's always a need for huge marches for hundreds of thousands of people to get out on the streets to demonstrate their support. That is also vital as well. But what this conference does is it clarifies the position and gives us a route forward towards independence if all of the other doors are closed, despite the best efforts of our politicians. So that's what we'll be talking about over the next three days. I hope you can get along uh, to see it in person. Now, it's never been more important for Scotland to decide on independence independence. The clock is ticking at the moment and every single uh, news media in the world at the moment is forecasting a global economic crisis caused mainly by the incredible greed of massive oil corporations, gas companies uh, and electricity providers who are profiteering absolutely incredibly from the misery of the people at the moment and are expecting the people who haven't had a pay rise for over a decade, as Mick Lynch pointed out when he was being interviewed about uh, the RMT strikes, that most public sector workers in the entire UK haven't seen a real pay rise in over 10 years, despite the fact that prices have continued to climb and despite the fact that the energy companies, the big six as they're known in the UK, are going to rip everybody off to the tune of about £3,000 a year for something which used to cost them just over £1,000 to heat and light their homes. So we're cruising towards an economic crisis and a, <coughs> a poverty crisis caused by the greed of multinational corporations 
which are basically being enabled by the far-right Tory government, which is basically just letting them do whatever they want and saying they are not going to do anything to stop it. They are not going to tax tax them until their pip squeak, which is exactly what should be happening, instead of which we are getting lip service from people like Rishi Sunak, who hopes to become the next PM, God help us all. So we really need to get this done. Some of you might be thinking, well, with all of this hanging over us and all of this uncertainty and political chaos and all of the price rises, is this a good time to be doing this? Well, frankly, there's never going to be a better time. Unless you relish the thought of all of this misery coming your way in the winter time, then really it's a no-brainer. We have to get out of the union. We have to take back control of our energy resources from these private companies. And if we cannot get rid of them or get rid of the licenses that have been given to them, then at least we should actually exact a price from them for the energy which they are extracting from our territory. And one way to do that is basically by insisting that any new licenses include a very hefty chunk of shareholding for the Scottish people themselves so that we share in the dividends, the money that is made from these massive amounts that are being charged for energy. And also the fact that we should be able to strike a deal with all of the energy companies currently um, either manufacturing electricity, extracting electricity from the, the sea, from the wind, and also the gas and oil companies, so that we have the energy for our needs at a cost which everyone can afford. It really should be at cost price, like it used to be in the old days of the gas board and the electricity board, when we simply paid these uh, not-for-profit not um, government bodies to generate the electricity and produce the gas for us at cost price, plus a little bit, um, which was obviously intended to be reinvested. Ever since privatisation and Mrs Thatcher's legacy is what we see now, the chaos around us of these unfettered capitalist hawks basically ripping the guts out of every country, this is what happens when capitalism is unregulated. And we are seeing at the moment a global crisis caused by greed. It is nothing to do really with the war in Russia, although that has something to do with it, and greed is at the heart of that as well. But as far as the West is concerned, in fact, every other country outside of Russia and Ukraine, as far as we are all concerned, the crisis is being caused by profiteers, by disaster capitalists and multinational corporations. And once Scotland is free of Westminster, we can regulate those bodies. Nobody should be allowed to operate in Scottish waters or in Scottish land or air, extracting energy from that environment unless they are fully regulated and paying for the privilege of doing this and making sure that the people whose energy this is, us, actually get some uh, reward for the fact that they are extracting all of this valuable natural resource from under our feet. Anyway, I guess that's my rant over for this evening, but I'm looking forward to tomorrow greatly, and I hope as many of you as possible will be able to attend uh, at Dunfermline tomorrow. Like I say, if you can't make it along, then you can always uh, basically sort of appear by Zoom as a, as a sort of um, virtual person and enjoy the entire proceedings live through the wonderful miracle of science. Or if you can just get along for a day and pay a tenner, come along and take part. This is not about people sitting, watching and listening to people like me. It's about people like you coming along and talking to people like me and Sarah Sawyers and Dr. McNaught and Elliot Bulmer and all the many other notable people that are going to be there. This is your chance to ask the difficult questions and get honest answers for a change. And that's what this is about. Once we know what we're going to do, and we will do that by the end of this conference, we will have a clear picture of exactly the political and economic route to independence. Now, whether the SNP is likely to action this or not is up to us, the people of Scotland. Because as we know, we're currently on track to have a vote in uh, October of next year, so the 19th of October 2023. We can still have that referendum, that is one of the choices available to us. We can have it with or without a Section 30 order, and as far as I'm concerned, the Section 30 order is not uh, 
is not a game, a deal breaker as, as far as this is concerned. We can still vote and we can still do it legally. But to do that, I think the Scottish Government would need to agree um, to enact the conditions of the Treaties of Union, and that major condition is the claim of right. And that is our trump card. And when there is no other choice available democratically to have a vote on independence, that's the only choice that will be left to us. So we wait and see. But anyway, I'd be interested to hear your views if you come along tomorrow. And uh, I will try to live stream something from the proceedings tomorrow. I'm not sure quite how I'm going to do it. I might have a selfie stick and just hold the phone while I'm speaking. But um, maybe somebody will give me a tripod. Let's hope so. Anyway, hopefully see you tomorrow. But in the meantime, enjoy your evening. And remember that independence is not far away now. And there are so many different ways of getting there. That we are have to worry about section 30 orders and it doesn't matter which of the clown show is elected to rule England in London. That will have no bearing whatsoever on whether we have the right to vote for independence or not. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye bye for now.